Hey everybody, what up? All right, so in this video, I wanna talk about whether or not coding comments are, are necessary. And do you write co comments in your code or not? And the reason why I asked this question is like throughout my career, I've heard like many different points of view on this this topic. And like it goes back, like I, I, I used to, when I first started writing code, like I would comment on stuff that like didn't need comments, like basic logic. That would definitely annoy like a more senior programmer when you come along and you're like, one plus one equals two, you know, like you don't need to comment stuff like that. But as I started progressing through my career, like I, I started getting into .NET development and that's like fully object oriented class based. And we would use things like, I, I can't remember what the product was called, but it was like go stock or something like that. And you would click a few buttons and it would actually document all your code. And a lot of things were like properties on uh, classes. And it was like, getter setter functions and i found it to be rather like pointless because it would be like hey you have a property of like doc id or image id or something like that and the getter would say gets image id right and then the setter would say sets image id and i, I would be like well why is any of that necessary um so i've also heard that like good code should essentially comment itself you know like you sh if your code is structured in a very clean way, then I think it's it's probably not necessary to have to rely on comments. One of the biggest problems with commenting your code is that, especially like in a production corporate environment, is that code, uh, or really I should say the comments typically become outdated, right? And nothing's worse than having no comments as to having like incorrect comments or outdated comments. So I think that's one of the biggest um, detractors that I hear from people about using comments is that keeping them up to date is a very tough thing. And then when they're not up to date, they're just completely useless and uh, it makes things even more confusing. So that all said, I think in a perfect world that good code, good clean architecture is going to basically comment itself. And you should just simply be able to read the code and especially with newer tools that we have, like the, the editors that we're using, make it very easy to like navigate around, search and find like uh, implementations of things. Like th those tools have gotten so much better. And then also with all the type safety that we're now seeing in languages like TypeScript and, and C Sharp as well. But having that type safety and all the different modern day tools that we have, I think make comments um, a lot less needed uh, than they used to be that said who lives in a perfect world where the code is clean and everybody knows what's going on with it uh, because i would say nine times out of ten that is not the case and even when you do have a good clean architecture if it is a very large complex project then things can get confusing very quickly even with all the modern day tools and the type safety that we have all over the place so that said, um, I kind of thought of this because I looked at an old code base that I had and the code base, when I was looking at it, I was like, wow, you know, this is uh, this is a mess. And some of the stuff in there, I almost like had to like, I, I really scratched my head. I was like, did I actually write that? Like, I don't remember writing that. And granted, it was a couple of years ago. And who knows? I may, you know, I, I don't know, you know, what sort of frame of mind I was in, but like, in a way, I was like almost impressed and then also disgusted at the same time. It was like, wow, I, I really did write that going into like Git history. And I would have comments on some of my check-ins. Now, this is a personal project, so it's not a corporate project. So personal project, I, I, like I, I wrote it very quickly. It was very complex. It was large. And I wrote it within like three months. So I did not do all of the things that I would normally do in a corporate world. I just simply wrote it, you know what I mean? And I wrote it as quickly as possible. And I think that a lot of coding projects are, even if they're not, they don't end up that way or they're not, they're not that way specifically as the complications grow, like, and as business requirements come in, there's all these little edge cases all over a large complicated code base that I've seen. So whether or not it was a sloppy personal project, like my first example, or it was more of a typical large scale commercial project, um, things in edge cases start ending up in the code base. And for me, 
I'm very grateful that when I was reviewing my old code that I had comments all over the place. And again, it was not like, um, so this is a Stack Overflow ar article, but I think, yeah, like this is an example of what not to do right here. So it's like, I'm sorry, zooming in on the screen here, but like, you know, I equals I plus one, and it says add one to I. So those aren't the type of comments that I'm grateful for. Those are the type of comments that you should not do. Um, but in my personal project, there was a lot of things with like credit card processing and just like edge case bugs that I was running into that I quickly coded around and solved the bug, but probably not in the best way. And some of my comments explain that. Some of them explain like what it was doing and what it was trying to do, what the problem was. And a lot of those comments, I definitely would not do, like I said, in the corporate world, but for a personal project where I was just trying to get it out the door within a couple of months, I like, again, I was very disgusted and also sort of uh, in awe of what I was able to pull off. Um, so this website here is like uh, from swim.io and it, it's talking about making comments meaningful, which again is like what I was talking about. So auto generated documents uh, or comments, I, I feel like are, are not all that helpful. Um, they're somewhat helpful for like, if you're using something like Swagger or you're generating documents through some third party library or tool, um, commenting is, is probably necessary for those tools. But again, I don't find them all that helpful. Uh, I don't really find it helpful to like add comments of like Jira IDs. I, I see that a lot uh, as well, where like somebody will put like a Jira ID. And the reason why I don't really like it is because even if you link to the Jira ID and be like, okay, that's what they did to do this. But again, um, you know, there's probably four or five Jira tickets that came after that, that could have changed that logic. And who knows if somebody actually updated the comment. Um, so for me personally, I'd rather just have a description of what the code is doing or what the problem is that it's trying to work around because then I could look at the code, I could match that up to the comment, and then I could, I think, fairly quickly determine whether or not that comment is, out is outdated or not. Um, so yeah, just uh, curious what you guys think. I mean, on a personal project, are you commenting more than what you would at work or um, do you find that your workplace like either is like pro comments or no comments at all? Cause I've actually seen it go both ways. I've seen like where your code would not pass code review, uh, and even lenting rules and stuff if you have comments in there. So, um, that I think is crazy and excessive, but, uh, I don't, you know, I don't call the shots everywhere I go, but, um, that said, you know, I'm pretty happy with the way that I currently use comments in my coding. If you're learning to code, I recommend you check out my website, CodeHawk.com. My courses are fast to the point without the fluff that you'll find on other competitor sites like Pluralsight and Udemy. One of the reasons why you'll want to learn with me is that I'm a self-taught engineer myself. I never went to school for any of this stuff. I've been doing it for over a decade now professionally. The biggest reason you should use CodeHawk is that it's one price for everything. I try to make this as affordable as possible. Instead of having to purchase 15 to 20 different courses on Udemy or an expensive monthly subscription to Pluralsight, it's one price for everything on CodeHawk. Front end, back end, full stack. It has courses on all the latest web development technology. The courses range from beginner to advanced. So if you want to learn the latest web technology, give CodeHawk a look. There's demos for all of the courses that are out there right now. Uh, in addition, there's also my personal vlogs, which I'll be adding more to. So content that I don't release to YouTube is available on CodeHawk.